Hello everyone, I am Manisha Joshi and joining me here today is Susan Appleton, founder and owner of Appleton Communication, an international speaker, a leadership and soft skills expert, and later on we get to out who the lucky girl is that affectionately calls her Mimi. Susan, thank you so much for joining me here today. Thank you, Manisha. It's wonderful to be here. I love that your journey of developing Appleton Communication is actually a very personal one that started when you were a little girl. So how did this amazing international speaker, where did the journey begin that led you up to starting this company? Um, it started from uh, being a young black girl who seemingly had it all together, but I really did not have confidence. Um, I didn't understand what to do with my leadership, and I met a mentor wow. at 16. Okay. And she recognized in me what I had to pull out, and I remember it still till today. She told me that you cannot be a fly on the wall and be a leader, and that you have to learn how to use your voice. And lastly, no one will follow an angry leader. Wow. And so she began to help me to learn how to communicate, how to deal with my inner insecurities, and to build my confidence and pull out the leader that was in me. So she recognized something in you at the age of 16. She saw a leader in you and said, Susan, you can't be one thing and be another at the same time. You've got to choose fly on the wall or a leader who can face her fears. Up until 16, were there others around you, whether it was family or friends, that said, Susan, there's, there's something in you. We see it. Where is it? Well, and, and I had a supportive family. Uh, the thing was, we talked, but we didn't dive into conversation. Ah. And so, yes, I was a natural leader. People told me all the time that I was a natural leader. But being a natural leader and knowing how to lead and how to communicate are two different things. Right. And I didn't have the latter. And when you met this mentor, and I'm sure you've stayed in touch with her. I have. Since the time of 16 till today, has she called you up and just said one word, wow? Um, we, she's still in New Orleans. Oh, wow. Okay. And I got the last chance to speak with her maybe about three years ago. Okay. Um, remember when I met her at 16, she was already a leader. She was one of the most dynamic people that I ever met. Um, so she's older now. Mm -hmm. And when I go home, uh, I touch bases with her and bring her up to speed. So yes, she takes uh, pride in the fact that I actually did it. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And yeah. where from learning and recognizing there was a leader in you, where along the lines did you look in the mirror and say, I discovered this within me. I wonder if there's others out there who haven't discovered the leader in them. After many years, um, be because before we can lead others, we really have to lead ourselves. Okay. So once I recognized that I could do something with what I had, mm -hmm. um, I began to do the work. And the work starts within. Right. So I had to start to uh, work on myself, recognize what skills and traits that I had mm -hmm. that I really needed to develop. And then uh, I went to school. My career uh, has been in leadership development, and my focus has been soft skills, simply because I truly believe that people yeah. are the connection, mm -hmm. no matter what uh, organization you're in, no matter what level, mm -hmm. whatever business, the driving force uh, are the people. And so communication, relationship development, and people skills are the focus for Appleton Communication. I love that as I've gotten to know you, you always say that soft skills are the people side of the house. Can you share with everyone viewing what that means? Soft skills are the people side of the house. Because if you have hard skills, mm -hmm. they get you in the door. But soft skills are really the things that help you to manage relationships. It's the difference between being a good leader and being an exceptional leader. 
How do you approach others? Do you have self-awareness? Are you able to communicate and accept guidance? And do you have the courage to move forward? Yeah. Um, one of the things that I say you know, to leaders who say, I have an open door policy. Part of an open door policy is being open to ideas, mm -hmm. open to things that are different from how you might view them. And if you don't have soft skills, you really can't accept what others say. So they are indeed the people side of the house. I can give a great example of that. Uh, I was in my 20s and I had a wonderful boss, Diane Smith, and we were all part of the marketing department. And she put me in charge of a road trip. And it was, you know, we were going to go city to city to all of our offices and we were going to talk about the changes in the company, celebrate our achievements. And I looked at her and I said, I've never done this before. And she said, well, then go figure it out. Wow. It was the most powerful of, in my entire career. The confidence that she had in me, she saw something where she just looked at me and said, Manisha, go figure it out. You, you mm -hmm. can do this. And till this day, and I'm in touch with her over LinkedIn, till this day, I always tell her that moment changed all the stumbling blocks of my life because I still hear your voice telling me, go figure it out. And I did, and we had a great road trip, and it was successful. <laughs> However, there's just so many times when we second guess ourselves. And I think what you teach is how to get through some of those hurdles. Yes, because, you know, leadership in and of itself is a responsibility. It's a huge responsibility that we take on. Yeah. And we really have to take in all aspects of it. So the title of being a leader is a very minute mm -hmm. part of that. And what I've seen over the years and what led me into delving into and developing Appleton Communication to the extent that I have is I've seen soft skills work. Okay. I've seen the ability to manage and develop relationships work. Uh, in my career, uh, I had to apply, right, like everyone else, yeah. to get into a position. Right. But more often than not, I never had to apply to go further. Okay. Because my skills opened doors for me. Yeah. Um, I saw the difference between a leader who could manage, who could build, who could not only empower but educate mm -hmm. and build others along the way and how that allowed me to succeed versus someone who just took on the role yeah. and struggled and had a lot of turnover and had a problem with productivity. Yeah. Most times it stemmed from their ability to develop relationships. Mm -hmm. And they could have all the knowledge, all the education, all the knowledge, all the experience. And that could be the one factor that keeps them apart from having that camaraderie, having that level of respect. That's one of the characteristics I know we talked about earlier is that you can trust someone, but you may not respect them and vice versa in a leader, you know. Correct. And, and when you have soft skills, it helps you in your leadership role. Mm -hmm. It helps you to be strategic. Uh, it helps you to think through. Um, and soft skills are those pieces that as leaders, we don't always put a value on. Right. But they are just as important mm -hmm. as impacting the bottom line. Yeah. And if you think about it, all of the really successful corporations, uh, especially when the millennials mm -hmm. and the Gen X's and the Gen Y's came along, the, the focus yeah. changed because it had to be on the people. That's where work-life balance yeah. comes from. How much do you uh, ensure that you're aware of what a person needs in order to give you what you need. Yeah. And if I give you what you need and you help me to grow also, mm -hmm. then the business will flourish. Absolutely. It's, it's understanding the employee's needs, not just what needs to get done. And I think some of the best bosses and leaders I've worked with, you know, would say, Manisha, if you want to work in a, co you know, go to a coffee shop and think about this. Mm -hmm. or take a break and you know they've understood that sometimes stepping away or being in an environment that's more productive for you is okay they understand who you are and I think also what I love is great leaders get to know who you really are 
They yes. take that time. Yes. Not just, welcome to the team, this is what we need to get done, here's the deadline. They take that time to understand your personality, your wants and needs, and I think that's so critical. And it is critical, but I do want to say that it's not fluffy. Right. So when I say the people side of the house, mm -hmm. I understand leadership. I understand tough decisions, right. having crucial conversations. All of those things still have to take place, but your approach yeah. can get you better results. Sometimes we have to move it at the speed of light. You have to move with right, me, right, right? Right. But how do we go about making sure that when you leave that, even if it's a crucial conversation, mm -hmm. do you have a clear understanding of the expectations? Okay. And as a leader, I can hold you accountable. Right. But the other side of it is, as leaders, we need to be open to being held accountable. Absolutely. So with that, I have to ask, speaking of accountability, she's also a mom and who affectionately is called Mimi is her granddaughter, Soraya. So I just wonder, with all of the wonderful skills that you have, do you by accidently start to coach your daughter or granddaughter and do they ever stop you and say, Mom? <laughs> yes, not Soraya yet, but Darian, my daughter, uh, she's 26 now. Oh, wow. And even from, uh, say, 16, 17, you know, when you get into those years. Yes. And by that time, I had learned uh, how to not isolate her, right? Yeah. So part of that was using my coaching and using my training. And she would say, does everything have to be a lecture? <laughs> Can we, can we just yeah. have a conversation? So she taught me how to have a conversation, to still give her guidance yeah. uh, and not come out of the mom role, yeah. <laughs> but how to merge it. Yeah. Um, and Soraya is, uh, she's just simply wonderful. She has a great joy, right? She yeah. has a spirit of joy. And the thing that reminds me about leadership in that is, yeah. I truly believe that she's going to take that into either her own business or into her corporate uh, career. Yeah. And she will be able to develop a culture because that's what she expects. Yeah. That's what she has within her. And I think that's really important for us as leaders to understand who we are. Yeah what our principles are absolutely what do we want our culture to look like mm -hmm. and really are we emulating that or are we just saying yeah that we want others to do it it has to start with us absolutely you are also an author so can you tell us a little bit about your writing and i know also not only just an author but you journal every day which fascinates me because I'm just happy when I get time to sit down and have a full <laughs> breakfast every morning. I, I dedicate time for that, but you make time a step further to journal. I have to. Uh, I make time usually very early in the morning. And the reason that I journal is journaling literally saved my life. Wow. The ability to sit down and work through those things that I needed to pull out of me, to have conversations with myself about what was going on in my corporate career, to map a path for myself. So journaling is really critical because I think it gives us an outlet. And if you do it honestly right. and authentically, mm -hmm. you become aware of what you're good at and what I call your areas of opportunity. So it absolutely has to be uh, something that I do every day. Yeah. And I was able last year to participate in an anthology, in an anthology <laughs> uh, called I Am a Victor. And it was a story of 42 women telling how we got to where we are. And my chapter is the evolution of a fat and black girl. Because I was yeah. a fat, insecure, black, not confident girl who had um, imposter syndrome uh -huh. before we knew what it was. Yeah. And so I had to start to be intentional if I was going to get over those hurdles. And communication and leadership allowed me to do that. So it was a great opportunity. 
uh, and I am looking forward to publishing my own book next year. That's so exciting. I know. Now, for those who don't have a copy of I Am Victor, is it still available online? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, is it, it on Amazon? It is on Everything Amazon. Everything is on Amazon. <laughs> it is. It's called I Am a Victor. Okay. And mm -hmm. the author, the author of the book is uh, the. Um, the promoter of the book okay. is Dr. Cheryl Wood, okay. who was a, a mentor of mine. So it's a collection of all these inspiring stories of women from where they were and how they've come to be. I mean, when I hear your story, it's very inspiring for me. My parents were immigrants, and every immigrant that comes to America has dreams for their kids. Mm -hmm. So when I see where they were and, you know, God bless them both, they're both in heaven, but where we are now, I talk to my parents in my own way every day just so because I want to make sure they know that thanks to what you did for me, I'm able to do what I'm doing today. And in your case, the support of your family, your mentor brought you to where you are today and you're able to turn around and teach others what they don't know that they have inside of them, which I think is so powerful. And there is one tagline. This is one of my favorite taglines of Susan. She has many. And I'm not going to even say it because you say it better than me, but can you share with everyone the tagline and what it means behind it? Um, my favorite tagline is every contact is a contract. And what I mean by that is every opportunity that we get to engage with someone, whether it's saying good morning, whether it's doing a full blown presentation, one on one or in a group, as a leader, if we value that mm -hmm. as a contract, a beginning of a relationship, not contractual in terms of monetary, but it is the start of a relationship. Mm -hmm. It's the start of us building our credibility with that person. And so it is really important for us to think about how we engage, when, and on what level. Mm -hmm. So every contact is a contract. It's a valuable opportunity to lead, to educate, to empower, to guide, um, and to build a relationship. So you all know that since you're watching this, you now have a contract with Susan. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Over the years, since you've been doing Appleton Communication, I am sure people have come to you and said, Susan, because of you, this happened in my career, or because of you, I was even able to change this personal aspect of my life. Are there certain one or more testimonials that stand out to you that you know what your why is behind Appleton Communication? Uh, yes, I can think of two. One is a personal one-on-one -on -one client, and one is one of my corporate clients. Okay. Uh, my one-on-one -on -one client, uh, she was, uh, it was when I was with the corporation, she was in another position, uh, and she needed guidance, dynamic young woman. But the person who was working with her didn't really have the time to invest in developing her, and she okay. was a true asset. So I took her on. And she and I, um, together, with her being the lead, yeah. uh, built a dynamic uh, arm of that company that uh, empowered and helped youth to grow. Yeah. Uh, she went on to move to NASA. Oh, wow. And she is still with NASA. And I still coach her. Uh, not right. every day, right. but when she is going into a challenging situation or she wants to go to another role, mm -hmm. she'll say, I need you to coach me into that. And recently, a couple of months ago, we did that. Uh, she was going into a high level meeting mm -hmm. where she was presenting a proposal that had many tentacles uh, and could impact NASA on a wide scale. And we coached and she went in. She got the ear, and she's moving forward wow, with her project. that's so exciting. And that speaks volumes about what you do, mm -hmm. honestly. Because well, when you're, you know you're behind something that extraordinary happening, that says a lot about your experience and also that connection that you make with her, right? Anyone right. Can, I always like to say anyone can teach. However, it's how they teach, it's how they connect, Absolutely. and how they draw out what's important in that individual. That's so exciting. And, and it is, and you know with leadership, impact and influence is the name of the game. Yeah. 
because if you have really substantial impact mm -hmm. and your influence is there, people will work for you when you're not in the room. Right. Right. And so uh, one of the other instances is uh, I do strategic planning and we had a really great session, three or four hours drilling down. And one of the leaders of that organization texted me the next day and he said, hey, I want to tell you that yesterday was really powerful. I left with a clear vision of how to get there wow. because it's a five year strategic plan. Yeah. That's the beauty of people skills. Amazing. That's the beauty of communication and understanding how to go in and help someone to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And that's our job as a leader to lead others yeah. and to lead others well so that we not only be successful, mm -hmm. but they be successful and therefore the organization will be successful. And one thing our audience may not know is you were intentional before intentional was a thing. <laughs> Help the audience understand what that means, because I think that is just, it reminds me of like, okay, you know, I had a pair of blue jeans before <laughs> Levi's was cool. And when you told me that, I thought, okay, you've got to share that with everyone. Uh, well, you know, intentional is a buzzword now, yes. right? And so sometimes people uh, shy away from using those terms because they are buzzwords, mm -hmm. but it's a real thing. And so I could not get to where I am without having intentionality. I had to intentionally recognize what I lacked. Yeah. I had to be very intentional in understanding and recognizing that this leadership thing was what I wanted. I wanted a really good corporate career. I wanted to impact people. I wanted to impact an organization. Yeah. And so I had to be intentional in that. Um, and then so being intentional is not just a fad. Right. If you set a course mm -hmm. and intentionally follow it, then you can get to where you want to be as a leader. The thing that we cannot forget is we don't get there by ourselves mm -hmm. and we don't stay there by ourselves. Very true. So we have to value the others who can help us, yeah. who lift us up, who drive the organization. And that's leadership soft skills. Yeah. And you've also taught a lot of these soft skills locally in Jacksonville and nationally through Zoom calls and conferences. I know you recently did a course through at Venture Leadership with the Jacksonville Women's Business Center. And I just remember several women coming up to you and saying, Susan, you got me. And these are women from all walks of life, all levels of experience, different industries. And I think that's amazing that how you teach, how you have presented yourself, no one feels as though it's coming across as you pointing a finger or making them feel like they're not doing enough. Because when women come up to you and say, you got me, that's very powerful. And I, I'm hoping that all of you out there have the opportunity to be in a class with you because you have a lot of speaking opportunities in the next year. So be sure to sign up for her newsletter, which leads me to, if folks want to reach out to you, how can they reach you? Uh, across social media, I am Appleton Communication. Uh, my website is Appleton Communication with no S dot com. Uh, I can be reached via phone at 832-600-1828. And I'd love to hear from you. And you have a newsletter sign up on there as well. So be sure to stay in touch so you can see where this amazing lady will be next. Thank you so much, Susan, for joining me today. Thank you, Manisha. It was wonderful talking to you. And I cannot wait to talk next time. Thank you, everyone, for watching, and have a great day. Thank you.